How you doing everyone? It's Joe from Living to Learn. Just out on a day hike on a cold Dublin morning. It's about zero degrees Celsius here, one degree Celsius there and thereabouts. And I thought I would share my 2018 Haversack loadout um, with you guys. It's been great discussing back and forth with you guys through PMs on what you was run in the forest and what I, what I run in the forest and reasons for and against. It's, is it for everybody No, and would I use it on a long term or kind of an overnighter? That remains to be seen, but I'm enjoying a, a new challenge um, and another reason to get out into the magical playground that we call the woods. So I thought I'd share through the medium, which is a lot easier to convey than PMs, what I carry, why I carry it, why I'm trying it for this uh, coming season. So first off the bat, I'll show you what I carry on my belt pouch or on my, on my belt, just because I believe that's also part of your kit and isn't always in my haversack. So first off, I have my belt knife, which today happens to be the AA Forge Woodlander. It's a nice knife, standard kind of bushcrafty knife. Then in this belt loop here, I have my uh, tomahawk, uh, nice size, the Pathfinder Long Hunter. I've been using this for, for quite some time, but the, I like it because of the extra length allows you to get that fulcrum. The head is very light, it's very solid. That head is, is pretty cool, but a slight tap of the handle and she comes off. A fantastic tomahawk, and the handle is slim enough that it fits through the belt loop of every pair of trousers that I own, and I don't have to carry a sheet for it. I either carry it across the two belt loops on the back, scout style, or I just stick it in the belt loop on the side and let it angle down like that for when I'm using it. On a lanyard in my back pocket, I carry a Swiss Army Knife Hiker, or Victorinox Hiker, and I absolutely love this. I have to say, so far over the past couple of months, and trying this kit, this is the real hero um, of what I've been using. It's a fantastic one, and I regret not carrying it sooner. Normally, I would carry just a folding knife, like a spider core or a Benchmade, but this little guy has been absolutely fantastic, and I'm, I'm glad I started carrying it. I think, come what may of this season's project, that this is something that I'll, I'll remain to carry. And then on my belt, which I'm not going to take off, is a standard belt pouch made for me by Jason Conway. Uh, many, many moons ago, I started carrying it again. And in there, I have some first aid items. People have asked me why I don't carry some fire making items in it. But I'm a smoker, so I always have my big lighter on me um, in my front pocket. There you go. And from journaling and just getting out into the woods and, and getting boots on the ground, I've found that most of the time when I'm away from camp, um, it's usually to gather materials for fire. There's just in what I do, I, I found that I'm never too far away to be able to walk back to my place of where my fire would be, my vestibule of flame, if you will. And what happens most of the time when I am away from camp is I could stop, I could start crafting, I could be cutting a, a branch, which has happened to me before. Sorry for the velcro noise of the gloves. But you can see here, I have actually I done that away from camp and I ended up having to walk back to camp to get first aid um, supplies and be stitched back together. So now I carry them on my hip. I find that most of the time when I'm away from camp, that is what I need. So I carry a first aid um, pouch on my hip. Getting into the haversack, most notably, it's not in my haversack because I'm currently using it to kneel on. There's a piece of Reflectix uh, given to me by Carlo Flaherty at a camp and a great idea. Um, weighs nothing at all, it's reflective, it keeps you warm, it's waterproof. And normally I'd sit my haversack on this uh, to stop it being on the ground, use it for preparing kindling. It's, it's, a, it's a nice touch and cheapest chips from your local hardware store. My haversack is a uh, Toby Hobby from Red Kite Leatherworks, kind of long hunter style haversack, it was custom made, but he now carries these in his line. It's nice, be I like it because it's tall, it allows me to carry bottles straight, and we'll just get straight into it. Starting with the outside, I just, I'm a collector of memories, I'm a sentimental guy like that, so I have some pins and badges from friends. I have a little monkey nut, or monkey fist, that I keep on the side of there, which was given to me many years ago by a good friend, and some antlers and bits. I have carabiners on the back, clipped to the brass D-rings. Normally, I, if I'm using the Pathfinder Haversack, I just clip it to the straps. This here acts as an axe loop um, for me to be able to carry my tomahawk when I'm uh, 
going back and forth to my vehicle and then these carabiners which have all the uses that carabiners have I use it for clipping my gloves to my belt for bridge lines pot hangers they're carabiners they're fantastic opening up the flap you can see here from the size of my hand that this is a pretty substantial flap and in here I normally keep my gloves and um, I started wearing gloves a lot more in the woods from some very wise words from a friend of mine where he, he quite rightly pointed out that your, your hands are you're kind of your main tool in the woods and regardless of, of skill level new or old that uh, you do your hands in and like I learned you do your hand in you're out of the game so why not look after them so I've started trying my best I have pretty bad glove habits so I've started trying my best to wear them when I'm out in the boot so they normally live in here and in here I have two pieces of highly reflective orange material one is a big bandana which I'm down there for the various uses that bandanas have and another I carry is a towel because I found that my bandana will get dirty very quick from either charring wiping down blades uh, filtering water and stuff like that so I don't want to use it to be drying my utensils and my spoons or cleaning my face or hands at the end of the day so I just found this nice orange towel that I carry and I use that for that and if you notice he's not going on the ground he's going back in here nice to have a clean piece of, of cloth sticking up on the outside most notably is a drumstick not for when I fancy soloing in the woods but this was a cool trick showed to me by Andy um, from the Living to Learn community where it acts as a spindle and they make a great spindle uh, time for me is limited in the woods I don't always have the time to, to carve a spindle and stuff like that when I'm out and about so if I'm practicing with uh, park boards and um, bow drills and spruce root and all the other things that are bearing blocks that come with uh, a primitive fire this is a great one to save you a bit of time for carrying a spindle this one is made of oak normally they're made of hickory it's about thumb size thick it's dead straight and it's a, it's, a, it's a spindle for when you need a spindle then I have a Lee Robinson dry bag because no haversack is waterproof and I like to keep the, the contents should it rain Ireland is fairly really country so it's a hundred percent waterproof wax canvas dry bag made by Lee Robinson in the UK cheapest chips and I seen it and I, the way it's designed it's very long and very tall so I knew it would fit in here and gives me a little bit of a snow peak sorry cracked myself in the eye gives me a bit of a snow peak and, and a storm flap should I should I get hit bit bad weather first off the top is some milk I am a man of creature comforts I like my milk in my coffee so I have that in the top just because it's what I grab first time when I go out of the house next out of the top is my fire kit this is a nice small one that I'm able to throw in my back pocket should I be going for a dander and want to bring a fire kit with me and it's just some simple rudimentary items and um, matches ferro rod and a pocket bellows the whole point of this exercise for me is to try and force my hand a little bit more you see I carry a lighter on me anyway but just to make me process tinder a little bit better and maybe source out some new types of tinder and stuff so I'm kind of trying to force my hand a little bit in this load of that I'm carrying. So there's my fire kit that I can slip into my into my back pocket should I wish. Next out is my gas cooker, and I have my I pack my haversack the Ray Jardine way, the way I pack everything. And from journaling and keeping notes, again, I know what I take out of my haversack the most um, when I get to camp. And I always love my tea or to get a water on the boil to get a bit of heat into me. So the gas cooker comes out after that. The lid off my cup. And stuffed around the sides I have my backhoe needs no introduction it's a backhoe I have a match case which I crafted recently and um, I've always had a bit of a phobia or a kind of a mental block about crafting stuff and I made this um, based off a design that Andreas Elder uh, came up with so I've started carrying that more for sentimental reasons and it's always nice to have some extra matches on you next out easy now would be my Pathfinder bottle, my Pathfinder cup and my Tokes cup. They nest together really well, you can see here, it doesn't add any extra space. This way is nothing at all and it allows me to keep two vessels. One I can do my dirty work in, like boiling pasta, soups, if I burn them and this gets destroyed, it acts like a little mini pot. It allows me to keep this one clean for when I wish to have coffee or drink clean water and stuff. It's just two vessels, if I need to make char or anything, I can sacrifice this one make char until I, I can get it clean again and I still have a clean drinking vessel um, should I wish to drink 
Yeah, clean water. So that's there. Takes up no space. Gives me options. Two plastic test tubes that I keep uh, sugar and coffee in just to go with my brew kit. A roll of number 36 bank line, which is very, very hastily put away from the last time I was out. This was a spool of, I think, 300 feet, I could be wrong, but great, and it's my favorite type of cordage to use. You, when you do put it into a knot, it can be a bit difficult to get out, but if you use a sack or anything that has a corkscrew on it, you can use it as a, as a bit of a wrench to open it. The stuff down the innards of it is my mini tea auger, my mini scotch light auger. Great little piece and it weighs nothing at all. I'm really enjoying carrying this because it gives me more um, crafting options when I'm out and allows me to speed up the process of some of them. So it's a great one and it uh, opened up a new realm of crafting for me that didn't involve a knife so I could use things like dowels and um, uh, put holes in things for ladders and, and cooking utensils. So bank line on a mini auger. I have a wax canvas bag that I use to keep things separate. Um, I'm not normally a fan of dry bags and stuff, but the one thing about haversacks is they force your gear to live together in really close proximity. And as you can see from my cup, that sometimes you can have it on the fire, it can get dirty. Um, uh, all your equipment can get dirty. So just to keep the items that I don't want cross-contaminated with stuff um, clean, I use this little haversack. Inside I've got a couple of spoons, one by Pori Croak, um, one by Erasmus Esperson. And down the bottom, I have my little titanium stove, just because it was always getting lost and I really don't want to lose it, that fits on my gas cooker. I have a method of surefire. I'll always carry a method of surefire on me. This is fat rope, originally given to me by Bill Bluss from Gary Wolf Survival, and I absolutely loved it. And I used it up over the course of last year. And Carl Higgins was kind enough to uh, give me one from a big batch that he bought, and it's great. I always like to have shore fire on me because the weather can be inclement. Ireland is a very damp country, and sometimes you just want to get a fire going. I always carry a bit of fat rope. Then, down the bottom, just to keep space in the haversack and stretch the bottom out, I have various hanks of cordage from other products, a bit of paracord, a spool of bank line, a spool of jute. Again, very hastily thrown into the bag, but they are there. And my Mora Eldris, which I started carrying as a backup knife. I got my Nesmuk Trio on me with my pocket knife, my fixed blade, and my tomahawk. But as a backup knife, I started carrying this, and I found that it's it's fantastic. With a bit of practice, you can do, you can do an awful lot more than you think. I was never sold on carrying neck knives until I bought um, the Little Foot by Steve Armstrong from Field and Steel and fell in love with just carrying the kind of a smaller blade and this is now um, taking the place of that. I was given it recently and I'm just taking it on a, a trial run and I absolutely love it. I have a ferro rod on it here, again, more redundancy, but a nice little package. And I apologize to all the elders owners who've been trying to get me to buy one for the past uh, few months. But yeah, yous were all right. It's a, it's a great, little, great little neck knife. And that's it, that is all. Oh, and my little whistle. My son won't let me go anywhere without a whistle, so I have a whistle here clipped on the, the outside of my pack. But that's it, that's, that's what I carry. It's not the most super minimalist in the world, but that's not what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming to go out and find that sweet spot between what I can live with to be comfortable and save weight and stuff like that, that kind of crosses over. But this allows me to do most of what I want and forces me to kind of think a bit outside the box should I wish to do um, anything outside of what my kit allows. And that's my reasoning behind carrying what I carry. Uh, it's comfortable, I'm enjoying it, it's a, it's a good experience. So, uh, and thank you to all the support and advice that I get from members of the Living to Learn community. It's been um, really enjoyable. I'd love to see what you guys carry in the woods, um, in your haversacks, or if there's something I'm missing or something you think I could use, or a more adaptable way that I can make this work. I'm always open to suggestions. Um, these can hit me up anytime. But let me get this off. It's Joe from Living to Learn. 